What's up everybody, it's Soul Tomato, and today I'm partnering once again with Paradox Interactive to bring you an in-depth look at the Roads to Power DLC, this time focusing on the hotly anticipated features of Landless Adventures. Now, as a quick aside, when I, for the sake of brevity, say Landless throughout this video, just remember I am still referring to Landless Adventures and not, say, Landless Administrative or some other potential Landless down the line. With that out of the way, let's begin by discussing the bulk of what you'll be doing as a Landless Adventurer, contracts. Contracts are, at their core, the main driving force of your playtime as a Landless Adventurer in Roads to Power. These range from escorting a courtier carrying a message to a far-off king, murdering a ruler's rival, or participating in a faction conflict. The rewards for these contracts are based on the personality of the giver, their tier, and how well you complete them, with their own set of failure penalties if you should not. The success of your contracts, depending on if there's a scheme required to complete it, as many of them have, is dependent on your camp followers and officers, who will perform the agent task best aligned with their skills. I'll discuss a little later how to acquire followers and assign officers. Firstly, the variety and frequency of what contract type you'll get is dependent on something known as camp purpose, which there are six of in total. The first one is wanderers. This is sort of the default adventurer type. It gives you a variety of contract types, so you can basically decide what sort of route you favor. It also allows you to switch to any of the other camp purposes for no charge. For all the other types, it costs 1,000 prestige by default to switch. Next is Swords for Hire. These are mercenaries and will give you access to unique camp buildings and follower positions centered on martial or prowess-focused skills. With this purpose, you will understandably find more mercenary contracts or things related to that. Now, as a quick aside, since I mentioned it here, your camp and its upgrades work almost exactly like they did in the Admin Noble Family Estate, which we discussed in the last tutorial video. But as a quick refresher, you basically want to think about what kind of family, or in this case, group you want to be with these purposes, and then design your camp and its upgrades to complement that so you and your followers have the best chance for success. Going back now, Scholars is focused on learning and stewardship and give you a variety of upgrades and is probably the most flexible purpose besides Wanderers for people who want to do things other than fight and wars or rob people. You get a ton of different building options with this one. Next are explorers, and they're sort of a hybrid between swords for hire and scholars with a focus on adventure. Now, what type of adventure that is and how you choose to pursue it will be entirely dependent on you, but in general, the idea of this purpose is to range far and see what the wider world has to offer you and your camp by giving you numerous upgrades to your travel speed, provision usage, and capacity. Next, we have the freebooters. This one's probably the most self-explanatory. These are brigands or criminals and give you access to more intriguing criminal contracts. This could be seen as a more a dubious sword for hire where honor is replaced with cold coin, or perhaps as a band of assassins who seek to manipulate the scales of authority. You don't necessarily have to be purely evil or self-interested to do this one. Last, we have the legitimist, and this is the most unique purpose because it's designed to specifically make you landed, but not simply landed as a count or a duke, but as a king, and it's only available to individuals who have claims on a kingdom title. So in my opinion, this is great for characters like Harold Godwinson for players who want to play as them, but you know, would get destroyed by William. You can do any number of other contracts as this purpose, but they also get a unique contract called Legitimist Support Contracts, which are essentially negotiations with other rulers for troops and money in exchange for, well, something in return. Anyway, your purpose will determine how you set up your followers, because if you, for example, are a Swords for Hire mercenary band, as you can see on screen, and you're wandering around with a lot of heavy infantry and cavalry men at arms, then it may be a good idea to hire an officer that complements those roles. You unlock officer positions by investing in certain building upgrade paths in your camp, which for this example would be the Proving Grounds building, and getting its sub-upgrades called Personal Bouts and Nightly Barding Drills. Most officer positions are hidden behind camp upgrades in this way, with a few naturally available by default, like your second or caravan master. Lastly, before we move on, the purpose of your camp will also dictate alongside your culture how your party will dress when adventuring, as I've tried to demonstrate here on screen. Now back to contracts. The icon of the contracts on the map make it easy to see at a glance what type of contract they are, be it a mercenary, travel, or steward-based contract. Contracts are broken up between standard and criminal, with criminal ones being indicated by their dirty appearance and red markings. While both offer their own rewards, criminal contracts generally lower opinion with the local ruler and also count towards something known as gallows bait, which I haven't talked about yet. This is a new trait which has a variety of modifiers for you more criminally minded players to work towards or to avoid, as you can also repent from this in a sense and eliminate this if you feel bad about your past uh, opportunism. Now, we mentioned contract tiers a little bit, but the quality of contracts is based on who it is given by. Their rewards and expectations are adjusted accordingly, and what contract tier you get is dependent on your own prestige level. With contracts in your camp out of the way, I think it's important we discuss provisions before moving on to other factors like acquiring new followers. Reason being is provisions is your travel currency and is used for everything from restocking men at arms to even hiring wandering camp followers. So let's go over that first and then we'll move on to followers. Provisions are, well, they're food and indicated by this apple at the top of your screen. You can look at them like the gold it costs to move between locations or to do a lot of things, but traveling is what it's primarily gonna be used for. Although certain things are free, like going to tournaments or feasts. 
How many provisions you can carry will depend on your camp purpose, upgrades, and your officers in charge of maintaining provision-based positions. Now, you use provisions for pretty much everything, from moving your camp to replenishing your men-at-arms after a hard battle, although you can also use gold for this. As a quick aside, men-at-arms are free to maintain for camps, although they do contribute to how many provisions you use while moving your camp. They cost gold to increase their number like normal, with the number of them you can acquire and their quality determined, as I explained previously, by your camp upgrades. You can acquire provisions in a number of ways, from contracts, which is the most common, hunting, which is not done through the hunting decision, but rather through a hunting foraging decision, or simply by buying them from a holding. You will almost always be camped within a holding when moving around the world. There you can visit and perform a number of tasks besides buying provisions like training new skills, hiring new followers, or finding new contracts from criers. On the occasion you are camped in an empty holding, however, you will not have access to these interactions. You shouldn't usually have issues keeping yourself stocked on provisions, but on the off chance you do run low, or worse, out of provisions, you will receive privation events which range from minor penalty pop-ups to death for you, your officers, your men-at-arms, everybody. In general, it's best to avoid the frequency of these for probably obvious reasons, so just keep yourself stocked if you're going to wander about the world. With all this in mind, let's now touch on the cast of characters you'll take with you on these travels, your camp followers. Camp followers are the heart of your party. These are your comrade-at-arms or crime, whatever you prefer, and you acquire them in a number of ways, like the free search for talent option when traveling, which can be improved via camp upgrades, or by hiring them from directly within a holding and from a few event choices. The skills of these individuals directly correlate to how useful they'll be in any given position and scheme, as will their personality in determining your party's overall synergy or how well they get along. Once recruited, you can and should assign these followers to be officers, which works exactly like core positions, so the process of assigning and picking the right aptitude shouldn't be too difficult. The only major difference here is that the cost is much less prestige to change people out, although it's still a decent opinion hit, and there is no running cost to maintain the positions as, unlike a court, these are more like jobs someone would probably have to do anyway within the camp. Most followers can also hold several positions, so don't be afraid to give somebody multiple roles if they have the aptitude for it. In contract schemes, followers and officers will be assigned to the role best suited to them, as we discussed previously, either manually or automatically, depending on what you have selected on the Intrigue menu. In general, the schemes for landless go much quicker than otherwise, as contracts typically only take a few weeks to complete. The better your followers, the better your chances for success. Also, as a note, if you're finding a follower not pulling their weight, don't be afraid to remove them from the position of your party or your party in general. There are plenty of wanderers on the open road, and being married to someone unjustifiably will do you no good. Now, let's say you've done it. You've traveled the world, you've seen the sights, you've grown a little older, a little wiser, a little more prepared, and you're ready to put roots down, either as a legitimist or as just a regular wanderer, and become landed. Now, there's a lot of ways you can become landed in Roads to Power. This was probably one of the most surprising elements I found when making this video. Everything from just inheriting land which is the easiest way, pressing an adventurer cast his belly to conquer a county or a duchy, being offered land in exchange for fealty to a desperate noble in a war. Really, there's just so many ways to do this. It is incredibly easy for individuals who want to spend as little time landless as possible to get back to it as landed nobles. Following your landing, your camp is destroyed with parts of the upgrade funds given back to you as payment for leaving the road. You will keep your followers as courtiers and can assign them to any roles you wish. But that is going to be it for this video covering some of the features of landless gameplay and roads to power. I want to thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel as I will be discussing the free features of the roads to power update from the new start date to the scheme system rework alongside a host of other new features in the next video.